Hello and welcome to After the Whistle. I am your host, Brian Dorrington, here with Muffin Mukala Kabongo, who apparently has a really good uh, introduction to the show. And I, apparently it's involving a whistle. I have no idea what it else it entails, but we're about to find out. What's your special I introduction? I got this whistle when I was down there in Miami at the Carnival Festival. Oh, Carnival Festival. Yeah. I don't know anything about it, but I heard those can get a little bit wild. Yeah, we can't discuss it. Okay, well, we'll leave that for uh, the internet special stuff that you can talk about. I came prepared off-air. today to laugh at all those Yankees. <laughs> there you uh, go. We got the Red Sox. Yeah, talk but about that later, but... Okay, we'll get you know. there. First, let's talk about uh, our favorite sport and our favorite team, and Ooh. that is the New England Patriots and their 38-24 win over the Indianapolis Colts. What did you think? You know, there's nothing like a good, overconfident AFC East opponent and then a team that just don't know what to do with their quarterback who could be a star. Mm-hmm. So they, the Patriots got two back-to-back games where... One team was overconfident, and you know they were going to lose because they're just not that good. And another team, they're just – you don't even know who's out there. You don't know who Andrew Luck's throwing the ball to. You don't know anybody on that team besides Andrew Luck. Half, mm-hmm. their, half their defensive players were, were injured. Their defensive backs were injured. I believe they had two guys they just signed, they just signed a couple of days before the game on the roster. So the Patriots, they did what they had to do. They played solid football at – against an inferior po- two inferior opponents, and they just got back on the right side of the tracks, on the winning side of the tracks. Yeah, I think that more importantly is guys that we need to show up and that were questionable about showing up are showing up. Sony Michelle being the big yeah, one. Yeah, and the yeah. fact that he's handling this huge workload, uh, they're really trying to get their mileage out of him at the beginning of his career yeah. before those rookie contracts. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. they try to run those running backs into the ground when they're young, and, and he seems backs. like he's able to handle, I know, poor running backs, but he's been able to handle that load, mm-hmm. and he's been able to take full advantage of it. Him and James White, they balance each he other out. He and James White, they balance each other out perfect. Another guy... Of course, Josh Gordon. Could, if, if you could imagine Josh Gordon catching Tom Brady's 500, uh, 500 career passing touchdown, I would have never believed it had anybody said it. But it was an amazing catch. He got. You, you can tell that he and Brady just had so much uh, joy at that moment. Brady goes to him. Brady tries to get him the ball too. Whenever he's out there, he tries to make sure he gets him at least some attempts to make some catches. Because why wouldn't you? Yeah. Because we we've seen that you know he's still learning the system. But that touchdown catch that yeah. w- he went after the ball. Yeah. He didn't wait around. He's one of those help receivers. The backs were sorry. No, but there were two on him. I mean, it was it was a great play. But it goes to show that Josh Gordon uh, can be, a, a, you know, maybe not to the level he was, but he yeah. can be a number one receiver on this team. Yeah. And then the other guy that we saw that we were, were unsure about is Julian Edelman. Yeah. Coming off a big injury, missed four games, suspension. He had a couple drops. Yeah, he did. But for his first game back, he was old, reliable. He was mm-hmm. great with those check down routes. He's always one of those good safety wide receivers, so those were the guys on, on offense that showed up. Oh, and one more is Cordero Patterson. Yeah, he's, I you told know? you, we talked about him early before yeah. the season started. The Patriots are using him in so many different ways, especially for him to score. They'll do a screen, they'll hand him off the ball. Or they're just, they're using him, they're using his talents. They're using all varieties of his talents. Right, and exactly, and, and they say on the broadcasts all the time, you know, other teams are going to be, you know, shooting themselves, saying, you know, how could we not have picked up on this talent? But Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels are able to to find guys and hone their skills and put them in the best place to succeed. On defense, our defense played pretty well. The they secondary, played. the secondary was pretty good, although we yeah. did let Andrew Luck back into the game. Yeah, yeah. But they played well. They got they got to him. They got to Luck. They they were getting to him a lot. Another reason for that is because the Colts have done a terrible job of protecting him throughout his career. That's been throughout the story. his career. They've never got him a solid offensive line. They've never. He's never had. He's never had top level talent around him. No. Never. And this is just, you know, their GM. That's what happens when you're a little, you know, you're a drug addict. Yeah, you're <laughs> a drug addict and, and alcohol. You, you make irrational decisions. But the Patriots defense did play well. They play the past two games. They played. They played way better than we saw what happened in Detroit and also what happened in Jacksonville. So some encouraging. We, we're seeing some encouragement from them. We're seeing their potential. Maybe, you know, 
they could keep going. They got a high power offense coming in. They do have a high-powered offense coming in. Um, Chung had an interception. Gilmore yeah. had three pass defenses. Gilmore's yeah. starting to look like uh, that Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl caliber yeah. uh, cornerback yep. that we thought we had before. Overall, it was a very exciting game. I, I'm also I do like Andrew Luck. I think he, you know he's a good guy, and you know he's had some bad luck, and he's starting to look like that. You know, at the end of the season, mid-season, that he'll be a top ten quarterback again because he was a top ten quarterback before he got injured. He, he's thrown the ball fifty times and sixty times. He's thrown the ball over a hundred times in two games yeah. and in a four-day span. You're not gonna win like that. They nope. need a. I don't know what they're doing. But, but he definitely has talent. But you're right. The, he's just in a bad place. Yeah. But he's there for a while. So. Yeah. Let's move on to the Jags and Chiefs. This one. Mahomes finally, you know, he finally slowed down. Yeah, he came he, back to he earth. Came, he came to earth uh, for a bit. Uh, didn't throw a touchdown past this game. Had his first turnovers of the season. But other than that, the Chiefs played solid. They played solid this entire game. They controlled the game. Well, Blake Bortles, he's... I don't know why. Blake Bortles just does Blake Bortles things. He had one interception. Not against us, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, but he had one interception. And he was just like, what are you doing? I believe they were... They were moving the ball, and he just had a terrible interception. But Patrick Mahomes, he did his thing. He played solid. He minus the two turnovers, he controlled the game. He scrambled when he needed to scramble. There was some occasions where he tried to do too much, and that kind of bit them in the bit them in the butt. But he he played solid. He's showing you that you know he can play. He can handle tough defenses, and he won't fold under the pressure. Well, yes and no. I mean, Blake Bortles turned the ball over five times. You're not going to win a game if you turn a ball if you turn the ball over mm -hmm. five times. It's just not going to happen. And Kansas City had to settle for a lot of field goals yeah. in, in this game. So this wasn't that that high powered no. offense that we're used to seeing. No. Of course, Jacksonville's still one of the better defenses. They didn't play as well, but also they're on the field more because their quarterback is turning it over five times. So to me, that's a game that the, Jags, the Jaguars lost more than the Chiefs won. Not trying to take away from the Chiefs. I still think that they're probably the second or third best team in the NFL right now. But this was not as impressive as a victory to me as the score suggests it I was. think it was impressive to the fact that Usually it's just they, we've been talking about their offense for so much, but this game it was it wasn't their offense didn't carry them to the, this game. Mm -hmm. They were carried by their defense in this game. So this just shows you that they the well balanced team right now. They, their defense wasn't playing that well the first any game. <laughs> but you got to look at Jacksonville's offense. They don't. Hey, they didn't have Leonard Fournette. They still don't did. have a wide receiver. Well, that's and, and then they have Blake Bortles turn over five times. I I I. I I think the Jaguars are going to take a big, drastic step back as the season continues. The Jaguars or the Chiefs? Jaguars. Oh, well, well, yeah. For sure. I think. Nah. I mean, they beat us, and they were nah, considered, and they were considered a, a, fa the a, a favorite. But yeah, I think that they're, you know, might end up uh, just a little bit above five hundred. Yeah, the prime time game this Sunday: Pats versus Chiefs. Now, the Chiefs came in to Foxborough last year. Tyreek Hill just ran loose in the secondary. They could, nobody could stop him. Nobody. And Kareem Hunt too, Kareem, right? Yeah, that was his break. Out, they, this is breakout game. Yeah, they just ran wild on the Pats. Even though the Pats held the lead during that game, they had a, I think they had a 14 point lead at one point in I that. I don't remember exactly. I think, Take your word for but it. But the Pats had led, but Alex Smith <laughs> back then he torched us. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see what what the Patriots defense is all about because they they've got. The Chiefs have a lot of playmakers on the offensive side of the ball, so this is going to be a really, really tough test for the Patriots' defense. Offense, I'm not so I'm not that much worried about because I, the Chiefs' defense isn't really that good to me, but it's more so the Patriots' defense against this Chiefs' offense. They have to make they have to make Patrick Mahomes uncomfortable because if he's back there and he's comfortable, then you got two you got a bunch of speed on the outside. You got a running back who can. Pound it between the tackles, and he could go out. He could come out the backfield and catch the ball. So the Patriots are going to have their hands full this weekend. I think what they have to do, and what Bill Belichick will do, this will be his primary game plan. I hope is that he will do everything in his power to prevent the big play downfield. You have to beat. You can't let. You always have to have a guy deeper than Tyreek Hill, mm -hmm. even if that means sending your safety. You know. 50 yards back. I'm exaggerating, yeah. but you can't get beat deep by Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey. Nope. I think that even though Kareem Hunt is a great back, I think you got to uh, 
play loose mm -hmm. in the secondary yeah. and try to make them uh, win uh, win by using Kareem Hunt by yeah. running the ball. They're gonna have to. They're probably just gonna have to make them be methodical. Yeah, and, take and, away short passes. Let's see if you could may if you could have. 10 play drives, 12 play drives, not just the big home run plays all the time. Right. And, and we're, our offense is going to need to stay on the field a lot. So yeah. I'm predicting a heavy workload. And I think the team that scores first in this game is going to win the game. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and I hope that it's the Patriots because the Patriots, they, ha they can't go out, uh, they can't start you know, seven nothing, fourteen nothing, yeah. thirteen nothing, because then they're going to be playing behind, yeah. and you don't want to get in that shootout with with the and Kansas City Chiefs. What I've seen Chiefs. from the Patriots the past couple of weeks is they've made an effort to run the ball a lot. They've made an effort, not even if it's not a run to get, you know, if it's not Sony Michelle, they're going to get James White the ball somehow. Right. It'd be a short pass and stuff. So they're making the efforts to just not have Brady going dropping back all the time and throwing. They're trying to make sure. They give a heavy dose to those, a uh, heavy dose of the load to those running backs, and I think they, they're going to do that again. And, and one other thing to note is that there's no Eric Berry than, in this game, and Eric Berry has done a very good job yeah. against Gronkowski. So I think this can be Gronk's coming out party. He he's kind of struggled at the beginning of the season. I think he maybe he's battling some. Yeah. yeah, but if he had that drop uh, that yeah. ended up turning into an interception, but I think this could be his breakout game. Yeah. One last thing about this game. Do you think the Patriots should be a three and a half point favorite? No. Well, the Patriots are a three and a half point favorite. Interesting. I think it's because it's home. Yeah. And they're coming off uh, a long week from having the Thursday game. One other thing I will note is that Bill Belichick and Andy Reid, two of the Andy Reid's one of the best offensive minds. Yeah. Belichick is one of the best defensive minds, but Belichick is five and two against Andy Reid as a head coach. That so. I did know. Okay, good. All right. Drew Brees, he set a record the other day. Oh, I didn't hear that. Uh, yeah, they have 70,000 career passing yards. I believe he's now the all-time leader in the NFL. Yes, he is. In passing. Is it impressive to you? <sighs> I mean, I'm more impressed by how many rings a guy has. But it, it, it is impressive. How His numbers are impressive. Yeah. If you look at just his stat sheet, it's like, wow, that's impressive. But if you look at... His system and, and how the Saints have played with he and Sean Payton, they're just a passing team. They throw the ball all the time. Yeah. And they've never had, you know, defense has never really been a focus for them. No. They had <laughs> Rob Ryan as their defensive coordinator before, yeah. before, for God's sake. So I'm impressed for it. I'm, I'm more impressed uh, by rings and wins, uh, which is something that Breeze doesn't have a lot of. He has, here's one thing I will say about Breeze and the one Super Bowl rings he has. Usually, you know, I bash somebody, if, you know, they're saying he's great, but they only got one. He has one ring, but that ring means so much because of where he got it. That's true, yes. Because of what that, whole, that, that entire community, that state, that city went mm -hmm. through. So that ring, it, although he has one ring, it's, it just put, it, he's like a folk hero down there. Because he got there, he pretty much revitalized the Saints. Him and Sean Payne, Sean Payne, they pretty much revitalized the Saints. They brought him back after everything that happened with Katrina. So that's why I place his his one ring. I place it up here. N not saying he's one in of, terms of in terms of the imp impact. Yeah, uh, the impact it, of the his, social impact. Yeah, 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 I agree with you. But with this passing records, it's good. You also got to see Drew Brees, he, his completion percentage is pretty high, too. It is. For as many times as they throw the ball, and he almost averages eight yards per pass throughout his career. So it's, an impress, it's impressive to, to a certain extent. But down the line, Matthew Stafford's probably going to pass him. Yeah, right, just so, a similar type. Yeah, because all the pass, Matthew Stafford, he, I think he had one season where he threw the ball 708 times or 720 mm -hmm. times, had a 720 attempts. So it's... It's not impressive as it would be, maybe like. Okay, 10, so so normally I hate doing these things, but we're, everybody's been talking now. Is Breeze a top five quarterback of all time? All time. Do you I think he's a top five quarterback would of all put time? Put him top. I'd put him right outside the top five. Uh, probably. So for he's me, somewhere there's, between six and seven. To for me. me, there's four guys that are instantly in the top five, and that's Brady, Manning, Favre, and Montana. I think those guys are locked in at number yeah, four. Yeah, Favre is your top five. Absolutely, I have Brett Favre as my top five. Absolutely, look at look at his record, look at his oh, yeah. uh, titles, and uh, you know you could make an argument for the fifth: Breeze, Elway, Marino, 
uh, United, even. So, 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 like, I put LA over far, but oh, I disagree on that one. But so, uh, so those are my four locks. <laughs> so, I think that you could make a case that Breeze is top five of all time. He's top ten, definitely. Definitely he, top, ten, top ten, for sure. So, now, the greatest show on turf, to say the, like, I'm all set, St. Louis, the Los Angeles Rams, they're back at it. They, this game, this was a hard fought game. They had to make some crucial plays in this game to win. What they did was a fourth and one. We're going to talk about another team that didn't do, didn't decided not to do something <laughs> yeah. on fourth and one. But the, yes. but the Rams, it was third and one, and everybody knew Gurley was going to get the ball, mm-hmm. and the Seahawks stuffed that out. So they went for it on fourth and one with the with the Brady S quarterback sneak and got it. And this is, you know, this is a big win for them to me. Although Seattle's not as good as they used to be, it's still playing in Seattle's a tough place to play. It's but a divisional win. A divisional win. Todd Gurley, that guy, he's my favorite for MVP this far, so so far this season. And the Rams offense, nobody can stop them. Nobody's nobody's showing they can stop them. And you know, their defense, yeah, but their defense made some plays here and there, but you know, their offense is really what's keying this team right now. Well, they have one of the best wide receiver trios I've seen in a long time in Cup, uh, Woods, and unfortunately Brandon Cooks, who we gave up. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are three top guys right there. I can't think of a better better trio in yeah. the league. Yeah. And then with Gurley running the ball, yeah. Goff is playing up to the potential that we mm-hmm. you know, thought he would coming yeah. out of college. But... Teams are putting points up on him. I didn't expect it. Yeah, yeah. And Nadamik and Sue and your boy Aaron Donald have not been that dominant they, they when it comes to the, the run. Game. Yes, yeah. but they gave up 114 yeah, yeah, yeah. rush yards right up the middle. Yeah, They're starting good. to get that's some sacks, so the defense, they could yeah, be ironed out. You can tell Sean McVay is one of those um, uh, you know, offensive-minded, offensive yeah. uh, defensive-type coaches. Yeah. They do have Wade Phillips, who's a good defensive coordinator. Maybe they'll figure out at some point in the season. But right now, their offense is what's keying them, and I'm just, I just like how they're doing it. And it's not as if they're dropping back and launching the ball all the time. They're, they're, Todd Gurley, he gets the ball, and he's almost averaging like four or five yards a carry. Yeah. Like he's that so far, my early season MVP is him. I think every court. It's very tough for running backs. It's to tough get for running backs, MVP. but if there would be a running back to win it, it'd be him. Yeah, I think I, I'm not going to go with the MVP things right now, but I think that he's definitely in the running. I do think it's fair to say, and most people will agree, that the Rams, as of right now, are the best team in the NFL. Yeah, definitely. Now let's talk about some underachieving teams right now. Two of them. Cowboys. Why are you even talking about these Yeah, guys? we're not going to spend long talking about these two teams, the Cowboys and the Texans. We'll just get straight to it. Cowboys, they were fourth and one. They were in Houston territory, and they punted the ball in overtime when they should have went for it, Try to get their defense. Although their defense was playing lights out, but still. Go for that. Go for it on fourth and one. What are you doing? What else you got to lose? I mean. Yeah, no. <laughs> I... I Totally agree with you, but didn't this happen like a week ago when you took the other yeah. point? You this point is what I view? said last week. It was fourth and five. I said maybe if it was fourth and three, fourth and two, fourth and one, you go for it. But it was fourth and five. I said, eh. But okay, I say fourth and anything if you're in overtime, yeah. you, you should go for it. If Fourth and as long as it's not like fourth and ten. It's only one yard, too. It's only you one, one yard. yard. You, can't, you can't figure out a way to, die, to drop a play that could get you one yard. I know people think you're going to give the ball to Zeke, but you can't come up with something that could get you one yard. And, and then DeAndre Hopkins ended up making like a Madden yeah. catch and then all those crazy moves, and he brought them in, and the Texans end up getting a win. But This, this was a snooze fest. Though, this was a game. snooze fest. You got two terrible teams with uh, two bad coaches yep. and two quarterbacks who are playing way below their potential. Yep. Okay, so. Deshaun Watson is looking good, but he's not looking like the, peop- the MVP candidate people thought it would be. Yeah. And Dak Prescott, he seems to be taking a he's step limited. back every year. He's he, limited. He's limited. He has no wide receivers. He doesn't yeah. have a tight end to throw to, and he's got a bad line. So I think that, that these teams, both of them need to get rid of their head coaches first oh, and you're foremost. Finally, now you're finally, I'm finally with on the Bill board. O'Brien I'm thing. finally on because Bill O'Brien had some questionable calls uh, there been, as well. I've been telling Brian since the, since before the season started, Bill O'Brien got to go. Now he's finally on the Bill O'Brien got to uh, go boat. Yeah, I, I think so. I think they just need a change. I don't think that they're doing their teams any favors. Yeah. And 
I don't know. The, these not, are two boring yeah, teams. Yeah, None of, yeah, neither yeah, of them are another, contenders. Another. Although the <laughs> NFC, I will just say one thing: the <laughs> NFC East is totally wide open with terrible teams. Terrible. Somebody's gonna get in there. Oh, we got another nine. one. We're talking seven about. and nine or eight and eight is gonna get yeah. that to a playoff win. Giants and Panthers. The, the Giants actually did everything to possibly win this game. Yeah. The Panthers tried to do everything to lose this game, mm -hmm. and in the end, it turned out to be a 63-yarder that won this game. The, impressive. I it was very impressive, but the Giants, they, there's a whole lot of issues going on with them. You've, have you ever heard about the Odell Beckham interview with jo Josina Anderson? Of course Anderson? I've heard about it. What's and little that, Wayne doing there, first that, of all? That was random. Let me tell you something. I would ship Odell Beckham out of here first thing after I saw that interview if I, if I was a coach. <laughs> I would say, give me two first-round draft picks and a wide receiver prospect. Giants, Goodbye. I'm, Goodbye, Odell there's Beckham. A, there's a whole lot of problems with the Giants. I would, Odell wouldn't be the first person I'd ship out, but that whole team is just dysfunctional. All that talent around them. We've, this is two seasons in a row. They've had so much hype mm -hmm. around them, and they just can't, you know, they, they just can't put all that talent together. Number one, you don't have a, your quarterback isn't good. Your quarterback isn't right, good. Right, that's why you get rid of Odell. You get two first-round yeah, yeah. draft picks. You sink, yeah. this, sink this season. You draft your quarterback yeah. in the future You know it's bad year. when the wide receiver has thrown the longest touchdown pass of the season. <laughs> I didn't even catch that stat, but, hey, that was an impressive Yeah, throw. so this the Giants, I'm, I'm just – But Saquon Barkley has lived up to his potential. Real. Yes, he has. He's in every single – his first uh, – all of his first four or five games, whatever, how many ever many we've played, he's went over 100 yards uh, from the line of scrimmage. So he's lived up to his first-round potential. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he has. Speaking of also with the Giants, they released Eric Flowers, he, who was a top draft pick for them, but he was not good. He was not no. good from the day he stepped onto the field, and it was just he, he was getting beat every single time he, he got put out there. The Giants tried to trade him, but nobody wanted him, and now he's gone and for a guy in his, I think this is his second or third year, I believe, in the league. And Something. He was yeah. a ninth overall pick. He's I, only 24. Ninth overall pick, and there's been no improvements on him. I don't know what ha what they saw in the, on the tape, and the scouting tape, when they were they drafted him, but wow, this this got to be one of the worst draft decisions they've I've. Yeah, I think it's deeper than that. From I, I read into it more, and it seems like he's had fights with coaches and teammates and showing up late. No. It might be one of those things where a change of scenery is good. Maybe he wasn't buying he's into the system. That, he's just not that good. Well, he, he some people don't play well because they're not in a good situation. But yeah. somebody's going to take – he Somebody won't stay will. on waivers for a while yeah. because he's a, only 24. He's got good size, and he was a ninth overall pick. But, yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely yeah. a waste uh, – I best to wish that they could have that draft back. Yeah, now the guy that cost you your fantasy league yes, he victory, did. Mason Crosby. Kickers are the most unreli unreliable people in the world. This guy missed five field goals. He missed the extra point. And he, the Packers ended up losing by 11 points. Those made field goals. They could have won the game, and this guy. He only scared. needed to make three of them. Only he needed to make point. three. That's all. And he was just he was terrible, terrible kickers, kickers. Yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, you can't really take it too much away from Detroit either. I mean, Matt Patricia, he's, he's stringing got, some wins together. I think maybe he's gotten through to them. Maybe, 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 the maybe, they finally into figured, the system. maybe they finally figured out that his way isn't that bad. I mean, people were ready to run him out of town yeah. the, the, after the very first loss. And their division the is wide open. And the division is wide open. So, I think they're actually second in the division I now, think so. right? Yeah, so, I believe so. It's Matt Patricia, you know, I, I want the guy to succeed. Hey. I don't root for many they're, teams but the Patriots, but they're playing you know, solid they're football. They're playing solid football. the past two weeks. It's been home games now. Let's see if they can do that. They could they could uh, do the same on the road. Yep. Fletcher Cox, this was interesting. They he restructured the Eagles restructured his contract. For uh, I believe they so his new deal, they're creating six point five million dollar in cap space. And now he's eleven point seven million dollars more for next season. I think they're trying to they're trying to make a move. They're trying to pick That's somebody what up. The rumors the are rumors are they're mm -hmm. trying to go after a running back because Jared Jai just got is done for the season. Do you know any running backs that may know, be available I, I that know, you might need to clear some cap one, space for? I know for? one that's just sitting, waiting on his his money, just sitting relaxing. He's you know he's not he's he's in the state of Pennsylvania. He's not that. I don't know not how too far. Too far, be pretty close uh, drive. Yeah, it's not that far of a drive, so I think they might make a push for him. And I also heard they've been trying to make a push for LaShawn McCoy. So Shady Mac making his return back yeah, there. They might be. 
They need what they I, need a running back. They, they say they're not interested in Le'Veon Bell, but I, I think that they would be. I, it would be very tough to do a trade yeah. Yeah. at this point with Le'Veon Bell, but they are definitely prepared to make a move, like you said. They need a running back. Why not? Jamar why not, why not throw it in? To the Jaguars. Oh, Jamar not Charles to said. Not to mention that. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Cool. I didn't really feel like this. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not a huge thing. It would have been a few years ago, but. Yeah. DraftKings. Ooh, this is my favorite time. This is, this is your time. Well, Craig actually won. Finally. 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 Do you want to go first with your lineup? You could go first. No, you can go first. All right, my lineup, I have Kirk Cousins, the guy I don't trust. What? No way. But Wait they play a in second. Arizona. You got to explain. They play in Arizona. You hate this guy. I do. Ah. I have to look at the opponent. They play in oh, Arizona. God. I have Marshawn Lynch. Seattle's defense is not good. And Marshawn, he's probably going to want to have a big game against his old team. Mr. Reliable, James White. Jimmy White. Taylor Gabriel from the Bears. He had a solid game before their bye week. I also have Deshaun Jackson. They play in Atlanta. Atlanta has no defense. Mm -hmm. uh, Ridley. What's his first name again? Calvin. Oh, yeah. Calvin Ridley. Come on, man. Yeah. He's, he's been getting all the looks since Calvin Johnson, since uh, Julio Jones has been getting double teamed all the time. So he's getting all the touchdowns. Jared Cook, Cooper Cup, and the Rams defense because they're playing Denver, and Denver is just, oh. Huh. Yeah, but Denver's home. I, 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 I usually know. like picking home defenses. But I, just keep an eye on Cooper Cup because he does. he's in concussion protocol. He did uh, leave with a concussion. He'll be fine. So he'll. Concussion's he'll be fine. usually a week less. I think he'll probably play. Who knows? Yeah, he'll be fine. I'm gonna. Why don't we switch to mine, Pedro, the <laughs> winning lineup? I got another guy that you hate, and that's Andy Dalton. But he's been playing pretty well lately. Steelers have no defense. And the Steelers have no defense, and they're home, which I, you know, I always do. I take yeah. the home quarterback and I put him with their number one receiver, which of course is uh, AJ Green. Sony, Sony Michelle. I just said that they're going to need to pound the ball. They're going to yeah. want to keep Mahomes off the field. I'm going to. I'm predicting uh, at least 30 touches 30. for Sony Michelle. Ooh. At least 30 touches. That that could be through the air okay. or uh, through rushing the ball. And then I'm going to. I'm going to take a little. Um, Risk here and go with Tariq Cohen, the human joystick is okay. what they call him. He's had a few good weeks. He outtouched mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Howard actually mm -hmm. uh, before their bye. Uh, who else do I got? Muhammad Sanu because Tampa Bay can't play defense. Both of those teams can't play defense. Yeah, neither of those teams can play defense. And Juju Smith Schuster because. I don't really think Cincinnati can play defense nope. too well, so that's going to be a shootout. Normally, these Pittsburgh-Cincinnati games, they're all about defense. This year, I think it's going to be all about offense. Gronk, like I said earlier, I think this will be his coming-out party. Mm -hmm. No uh, Eric Berry to have to worry about covering him. And then uh, our, an old friend of ours, Danny Amendola. Really? I had to go a little cheap. Oh. I had to go cheap. Thirty-seven hundred. I, I, I spent. I spent a lot of money. I think he was the best one down there. He's yeah. good. He's good for uh, those check down routes. Yeah. So we'll see. And then we'll I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm choosing the uh, the Packers. This is more of a, a fade <laughs> against San Francisco yeah. Yeah. Uh, than it is uh, that I'm confident in Green Bay. So yeah. Sorry, well, San Francisco. All right. We're going to send it to Craig with the fantasy no huddle. Let's see what he's got. Who he got for this week. What's up, everybody, and welcome to No Huddle here on After the Whistle. My name is Craig from The Flex. My show is on Wednesday nights at 9. Check me out. But today I'm here on No Huddle to give you my DraftKing picks of the week. Uh, starting off with my quarterback, I'm going with Big Ben. Big Ben Roethlisberger, he's going against Andy Dalton and the, and the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Bengals ain't stopping nothing. You have to, in order to beat the Bengals, in order for the Bengals to win, they got to outscore you. It's not going to be from defense. Although they did have a good defensive game last week. Uh, but Big Ben is my pick. He's got Antonio Brown. He's got Juju. And I think that Vance McDonald and Jesse James will have a decent, uh, a decent game this week. Uh, so definitely go with Big Ben. I'm going to follow it up with TJ Yeldon. I don't really like TJ Yeldon mostly, but he had a good game last week. He's going to be the starting running back this week. They got a good matchup. I think that he catches passes, and, you know, with PPR and DraftKings, that means everything. I think he's going to be the guy they're going to go to in the goal line because who else they're going to go to? Leonard Fournette's gone. Grant's out. And 
you're kidding me with Jamal Charles. They signed him. They signed him just to make sure that they have someone to play. Um, but T.J. Yeldon's going to be good. I'm also going to roll the dice on Isaiah Crowell. You know, I'm not expecting him to do what he did that last week, but I am expecting him to have a good game against the Colts who are not good at stopping the run. I think Isaiah Crowell is just going to beast it up, and uh, he's going to get those goal line touches and maybe one or two big runs. Who knows? But I like Isaiah Crowell. Uh, wide receivers, I'm going with my boy Juju. I love Juju Smith, and he's going to look to recover from last week's slump. You know, he only put up 10 points for me this past week, and I talked to him, and he said he's going to double that up for me. So look for Juju Smith to go off on Cincinnati. Uh, a player who I don't normally pick in DraftKings, Emmanuel Sanders. I think they have a good matchup this week. I think Emmanuel Sanders is going to take advantage of the coverage against Demarius Thomas, and I think he's going to put up some numbers for me. Uh, so I like Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, another risk I'm going to take, actually back-to-back -back risks, I'm going to take Deshaun Jackson. I think Deshaun Jackson returns to the performance he put on to the first two weeks of the season, and he gets up to the, to the high 20s, low 30s. Uh, I like Deshaun Jackson this week in his matchup. Uh, following that up with Cameron Brait. Uh, Cameron Brait has, has the starting job as the tight end because O.J. Howard's out. And as long as O.J. Howard stays out, they only got Cameron Brait. So when they get in that red zone, look for Cameron Brait to nab that touchdown. Um, for my flex position, uh, I had a feeling this week I'm going with John Brown. John Brown has been held out of the end zone. I think he gets into it uh, this week. So look for John Brown to be a good flex starter for you uh, or even a top wide receiver in the, if you have a, a two to three wide receiver set. Finally, when it comes to defenses, I'm going with the Jets. I'm rolling with the Jets this week. I hate the Jets. I hate New York. But I think that the Jets will put in work against the Colts. I think they're going to get to the quarterback. I think they're going to get interceptions. And maybe, just maybe, a pick six. So if they get a pick six, you know you heard it from me. Uh, but those are my DraftKings picks of the week. Uh, Big Ben, TJ Yeldon, Isaiah Crowell, Juju Smith-Schuster, Emmanuel Sanders, Deshaun Jackson, Cameron Brait, John Brown, and the Jets defense. So take my advice. I hope you win. My name is Craig. This is No Huddle on After the Whistle. My show is The Flex. It's on Wednesday night at 9. And check me out. I hope you, I hope you win this week. Good luck. Well, thank you, Craig, once again. As always, he's reporting from the blimp, which is fun. I'd like to get up there one day. I don't know why we can't record there. Uh, what do you think of his lineup? Yeah. Question about TJ, TJ Yeldon yeah, and the Jets few, defense. There's a few question marks in there's there. There's a few question marks in there, but he beat us last week, so he got hey, his first win. He got his first Finally. win. It probably won't happen again. Nope. So, this is the thing I'm most excited to talk about. <laughs> yeah, uh, he is. And probably anybody who watched <laughs> The Carnage has been talking about it with their friends and whatever all week. And that's what happened in the McGregor Habib fight. I don't think, do we, want, do we need to explain what happened? Why, why do you explain what happened? I think everybody's probably seen it, but <laughs> McGregor got choked out. He had the tap, and then Habib just Habib and his crew just, you know, Habib decided he was gonna go after one of Connor's trainer who was talking a lot, hopped the fence, and then everything just went wild in there. This is my thing. I've already said this. Don't mess with Russians. <laughs> Do not mess with Russians. Any culture that drinks vodka in the morning is just. A culture that you they don't drink, want to, They drink vodka in the morning? They drink vodka in the morning. Yeah, those are it's gross. like negative 10 degrees out there in Russia. The, I, those are just, that's a culture that you don't want to mess with because they could take a punch. Well, those, they, Conor McGregor is uh, Irish. They uh, drink yeah. every single but hour they, of the they're day. They're not built like Russians, though. The, the Irish Well, for, I'm built, just talking about yeah. the alcohol consumption. Yeah. I can but, say that because I'm Irish. But this is, this was probably some the best thing that could happen to UFC. This is probably one of the best things that, because you know they're going to get another fight. They're going to, there's going to be more money probably invested in it. There, people were saying they should take away Habib's visa or whatever, but this is this is the type of things that could only happen in UFC. UFC yeah. and boxing. This is the only this could all these are two sports that this could happen because this was deeper than just the fight because they 
You know, McGregor with his antics, he was talk he was talking about the guy's parents, he was talking about the guy's father, he was talking about the guy's religion, he was calling somebody a snitch in his camp or something like that. And there was also the bus incident. So I think this was just a payback for the bus incident. What, what happened afterwards, this was a payback for the bus incident. Sure. So I I mean I found it hilarious. It was hilarious to me, especially when he jumped over the when he jumped out the cage. That was the funniest part to me. Yeah, I mean that's that's just over the top, but that's yeah. what MMA is. That's I mean, fighting. there were there were so many reports of fighting, of people fighting in the audience as well. Yeah, like there were like McGregor fans, like just fights all over the place. Yeah. It's like it's like a, a meatheads only <laughs> type thing when you go to one of these yeah. UFC events live. It's it was. You'd like to say Conor McGregor had it coming, but then at the same time, you know, I think Khabib <laughs> took it a little definitely too far jumping over the cage and yeah. fighting after that. Yeah. It would have been fine with just, you know, uh, choking him out, talking a little smack yeah. after that. But yeah. when you start fighting, you know, people's crew. Yeah. That's but, more, that's just like, it's deeper it, than it's, just, it's, yeah. it's deeper than it is, but I could see how Conor McGregor could, could get under people's skin, and he <laughs> did start this because it would, because McGregor brought in like 12 of his friends from Ireland, and that's when he chucked the, whatever it was, the dolly onto the bus and hurt a bunch of Habib's people. Yeah. So this was long this brewing. In, in, yeah. yeah, and it is kind of karma. You should, that's a, that's a good word for it. So Conor, Conor McGregor, uh, through the through the first punch when when he started with Habib, yeah. but uh, I guess Habib is less scared about uh, the law and the less. The man the, fought bears as a child. He right, fought a bear no, as a child. No, but he's very scared of his father yeah. and what happens when I he mean, goes back. I mean, wouldn't home. you be scared? His of father me? said that he's gonna whoop him when he gets. Wouldn't back you home. be scared of your father too if he made you wrestle bears? Yes, yeah, as a child. So you know, that's if, a scary guy. If you the father's make. making you wrestle bears as a child. I don't want to know what the grandfather was making the father do as a child. So, you know, they probably Every got, generation yeah, gets a little a bit generation. better, but yeah. still. But the, whole, the, the most hilarious thing to me about this, I, I like going on Twitter to see the comments, is everybody just going, uh, Conor McGregor talking all that trash and got his butt whooped and stuff. As if you guys don't, you guys have not been watching Conor McGregor since he got into the UFC. That's his thing. He talks a lot of trash. He does, he, so, he's won more fights than he's lost. But this is what he does. He talks a lot of trash. He makes it personal. He gets under your skin. We've seen this in fighting sports throughout. In boxing, we've seen it. Now we see it in this. So I, don't, I just don't understand the people that are like saying this is what Conor McGregor gets as if, as if he's done this all the time and he loses all the time. He's, right. My thing is, he does this, but he's won more than he's lost. But he's lost his last two fights, the Mayweather. So, and so it doesn't matter. He's still number one. Number one where it matters, and that's the pay-per-view buys yeah. and the number one draw. Yeah. And he's still this isn't gonna change that. Nope. Okay. And if anything, that this is this can help it. Yeah, and people want to see him lose more just exactly. because of this. So now the rematch, there, there's gonna be a rematch next year at some point. There's gonna be a rematch. And this is gonna be, be yeah. I don't know, maybe this maybe it might be a battle royal or something. They just have each crew <laughs> get in there, just have a big Yeah, MMA Vince McMahon royal. could promote this one. Hey, maybe it could be a WrestleMania. It could be, thing. A, it could be a WrestleMania. I could headline WrestleMania, Vince. Be, Vince, if if you're gonna do it, remember where you heard it first. That, maybe you should give us a little. And bit they of have a, a storyline too. Yes, they, they have do. a storyline that they can promote. Boom, we just did it. WrestleMania in March. Habib's Habib. crew versus uh, McGregor's crew. I we love it. Got it from us. I like it. NBA time. We're gonna do our season preview. Yeah, what do you? You, you wrote this down. What are just, we? How are we gonna just preview do the NBA, entire season? Not the entire season. We're just gonna preview teams, the East and West. So what? So far. Let's get your thoughts on the East so far. Well, I think the East is, like we've been saying all the time on this show, it's a lot less uh, talent in the East than in the West. And there's really only, I think, three teams, maybe four, that are mm. going to be able to contend, and that's the Celtics, who yep. I think are uh, head and shoulders above any other team. And you're not going to like this, but I think the Toronto Raptors and the 76ers are those, are those three teams that are – Head and shoulders above the rest of the I'll class. I'll say this about the Raptors: if they get Kyle, if they get rid of Kyle Lowry, I will not say anything bad about the Canada or Toronto. I don't I'll, believe that. I won't I believe that I for a it. second. It's on camera. I won't say nothing bad. But the the East definitely. I think the East will be somewhat. It'll be competitive. It'll be competitive 
the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Bucks, be, the Bucks too. I think you've got to we'll look out for the, the, the Bucks, Bucks just because yeah. they have one of the they best players in basketball. Yeah, they have too. talent. The Cavs, they have talent as well. I think they're going to be they're going to be a team that you know, I don't think they're going to make it back to the finals. Tristan Thompson thinks they're going to back. They're the team to beat in the East. Well, he said that because they haven't been beaten yet. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, yeah. We know why. But, yeah, <laughs> so they, I think they'll be up, they'll be one of the f- uh, top five or six teams in the league. But the Celtics, they have to gel together. They have to, you know, th- although everybody's back, they still have to gel. They have to f- figure out how to make everything work because all the injuries and everybody getting ac- back acclimated. Different ro- roles were changed last year, and now the roles are changed this year. So that's the team to watch. The Sixers. They just have, don't have three-point shooters. That's my thing with them. They don't have enough three-point shooters. In this NBA, you need three-point shooters. And then that's about it for me. I don't... I mean, those are really the only yeah, teams to, no, to, uh, of note. Unless, I was thinking of unless, a the heat, unless Jimmy Butler goes with the Heat. That I mean, would, I still don't think that's enough firepower, no. but it could put them in the contention. The Heat will be a playoff team, though. The it, Heat will be a playoff team. Right, and if they get Jimmy Butler, they'll be... A little bit above, I but I guess talks keep falling through. It seems yeah. as if they don't really want to the, trade the, Jimmy the, Butler. The, the who, Wolves who want a lot. They do want a lot. And I can't. I couldn't even think of a surprise team to come out the East. I, a team that'll be a surprise this year. Washington. No. <laughs> no. I'm just naming out. Teams here's a at prediction. This point. For, here's a prediction. By the trade deadline, Bradley Beal and John Wall will not be will be traded. I got a team for you. The Knicks. Moving on to, to the, the West. West. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was good. The Western Conference, it's Golden State or bust? Golden State, Houston or bust? Golden State. It's, it's the West is Golden State's to win. I'm worried that they might get a, they might get burned out from playing in the finals the past four years. Mm-hmm. But they're still a tough team to beat. You can't – if you don't have any three-point shooters, you're not going to beat them. Because this team, you could be up 22 points on them, and that 22-point lead could, could be gone just like that in a matter of minutes because the way they shoot the ball. And it seemed like, I mean, Steph Curry, the first preseason game, I think he hit like five in a row. So he's already in the mold. It's preseason. That, that greatest shooter of all time. He's just like reminding everybody that he's he's. Yeah, we, he doesn't need to remind everybody that. We know that. No, and sometimes you got to remind people, like, listen, I'm still here shooting th- this thing. So the West, the Lakers are the team. Lakers, obviously, we're going to see a lot of the Lakers. We're going to see them on every national. They got the most primetime games, We're going to see them course. a lot of national TV games. They have no three-point shooters. That's my thing with the Lakers. They don't have. LeBron's but, turned into a pretty good three-point shoot, shooter. But, but who else, though? That's the thing with the Lakers. Who else do they have that, you know, consistently knock down? They don't down even open? have that many great shooters, when yeah. you think about it. Kyle Kuzma, he's not a great shooter. Lonzo Rondo Ball, is not a great Rondo's, shooter. Rondo's, Rondo never been a shooter. Yeah. Brandon Ingram. He's not really a shooter, but he can he can make some shots. He can get to the basket, and you know, the the Lakers. They, they, I don't know. I, I don't know what the Lakers. What about know. the Nuggets? I think the Nuggets are a surprise team. That's, that's in, the in team that I'm division. watching. The Nuggets and Pelicans. Just to the see Pelicans what, too. They what got they, with any Davis. team with Anthony Davis is gonna have a chance. A team that I want to see take the next step is the Blazers. I was gonna say you, you love the Trailblazers. I like I like their I like their guards, but they just don't they just don't have a third piece. They have. The big man, I forget his name, Yusef, whatever his name is. They have him, but he's always hurt. They don't have a wing player. That's what they need, a wing player. So. And you've mentioned that you think, and I agree with you on this, Jimmy Butler would take that team into contention, but it doesn't seem like the Trailblazers are really trying to pursue him. No. Uh, and they haven't been in the talks. But. No, so they're, that's their, they're content to what, what, what they have. But So so let's get your um, finals on the East predictions and the finals on the West prediction. Very early at the beginning of the season. Celtics Celtics and Sixers are going to be playing in the Eastern Conference Finals. Warriors, and I will say... I'm, I'm, I don't think Houston's going to go back, so I'm going to say Warriors and Jazz in the, Eastern, in the Western Conference Finals. Jazz, okay. Yep. I'm going to say, I'm going to say um, in the West, Houston and Golden State. And then I'm going to say... The Celtics and the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, we'll see. Don't say I told you about Canada, man. Don't trust those Canadian teams. Baseball. Baseball. Speaking of Canadian teams not to trust, never trust the Blue Jays. Oh, man. 
this. So did you actually watch the Yankee series? No, I was at a basketball. I was put. I was in a rec league yesterday, but I was watching the highlights. Okay. When I got back. <laughs> so the so you're, you're still bandwagging it the, now, the, even in yeah, the playoffs. He's still bandwagging. The, the Red Sox like to make it interesting in the ninth inning. The bases. And Pedro home. still has uh, the Celtics <laughs> up, so apparently no, we're we not got, showing we baseball made, much respect. Baseball. Yeah, but look in the. You can look in the background. Uh, See, he's still got the it's Celtics. It's all Boston. We're it's not even Boston. showing respect. It's, we're showing to the respect Red Sox. to Boston. <laughs> but the Red Sox, they, you know, the Yankees, the, the Yankees, I will say, got humbled by mm-hmm. the Red Sox in this series. They got, they got humbled by the Red Sox because after the w- game two win, the Yankees were feeling themselves. They thought they were going to come, come to New York, take two games, series over, onto the Astros. But nope, rec- game three, the Rex, Brock Holt came in and hits for the cycle. The Red Sox put seven runs in an inning against them. They just completely, whatever confidence the Yankees had going into game three, the Red Sox took it all away. And it carried over to game, it carried over. In the pitching, Avaldi. You know, I'm, I'm riding the bandwagon now, so I can start <laughs> mentioning some names. Evaldi pitched well. Yeah. He might be the second-best pitcher going into the next series. He might be a game-two pitcher. So Yeah, and also the, the Yankees pitching also let them down. Let they, them down, the too? Yankees, they invested, in, they invested in pitching, apparently, I heard. But it didn't, it didn't come to fruition. Giancarlo Stanton, there's a, there's a missing persons report on him because he was – well, I don't know what he did this series, but he was horrible. He's still collecting his uh, huge three, paycheck three, three, either yeah. way. Aaron yeah, Judge, people are criticizing him because he played that New York, New York, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's been getting criticized for that. But anytime New York, a New York team loses, I'm just happy. I'm just very, very well, especially happy. when it's a Boston team, and especially and, when it's uh, a humble, and especially when it's in New York, yeah. that makes it so much and better. And when, especially when it's a humbling moment for that team, because New Yorkers think the sun sets in in dawn, whatever that saying is, it just <laughs> rises and falls when they wake up. I don't think there is a saying like that, but you know, can I'm make one up if you'd yeah, like. There's not, al- there's no alcohol in this cup, but yeah, yeah that we I'm know about. Like I am. So next, Yankees the, suck. Next, the that, there you go. That's what he meant to say. So the Red Sox take on the uh, the Houston Astros next. That's gonna be a tough one. And did we finally have Red Sox behind us? Well, no. So at least yeah. it's a baseball. Uh, That's gonna be a stadium. tough one. The Astros are playing some tough baseball. They're the defending champions. Yes. This is gonna be a good series, I believe. But Red Sox in seven. Red Sox in seven. Yep. Okay. Um, I'll say Red Sox in six. All right. Bruins. Oh, we're going to skip the uh, NCAA football? National football? No, that's after. Okay, okay, we're going to do things out of order then, I guess. Well, the Bruins started off with uh, a terrible loss against the Capitals. 7 0. Um, Did we have any footage from that game? So, yeah, so it was a terrible loss. And then they followed it up with two back to back wins. There was really nothing good to take away from the first (laughs) game. I mean, Tuka Rask just uh, played terrible. But. Their top line has come on. Bergeron uh, has has a hat trick already yeah. in the season. The, the top line of Marchand, Pasternak, and Bergeron is going to be the top line top line in the NHL all season, if not the top. One of the top three mm-hmm. for sure. They've got so much talent there, and they've got a lot of uh, young guys mixed with a lot of old guys. So they're still shuffling the second third, and fourth lines. They haven't really figured out who who's going to anchor those lines, especially yeah. the third line. So apparently David Backus is going to be trying, trying mm-hmm. out as the third line center, which if you remember, that's where he was. He was the top line center in St. Louis before coming over here. So maybe he can be that uh, third line anchor. He hasn't done it in a while, but there does need to be some stability in the second third and fourth line, but it's early in the season. How long, and how long do you think will it take them to mesh? Ten games. Ten games. I think probably to – well, I mean, it will change over the course yeah. of the season, but I think to get these, you know, really thing tough – these really lines together for the early part of the season is going to probably take about ten games. And luckily, the Bruins have a really easy ten-game schedule. Uh, I have some of the teams – they're playing um, – the Oilers twice, the Flames, the Senators again, who they uh, just beat 6-3, the Hurricanes, and, and the Red Wings. Okay. They're playing all those teams over it's the next 10 games. games. There's really only a couple, uh, the Flyers and the Predators, and then I guess you could say the Canadians, because they always play as well, that 
over the next 10 games that might give us some trouble. But some winnable games for the Bruins early on for them to develop some players, find out their identity, and hopefully rack up some early season points because that's always important to rack up the points Especially early, early in the on season. in the season. Yeah, yes. it gets harder later on in the season. Absolutely. So, all right, so we got NCAA. Before we go into our Week 7 predictions with the NCAA We football. can brag a little bit. Yeah, we both picked this game, Texas upset over Oklahoma. This was the Red River Red River rivalry. It's hard to say. Yeah. I would not try to say it three yeah. times fast. Yeah, so Texas Texas jumped on them early. Texas's yeah. offense was ro really rolling. Oklahoma's defense was not. And, you know, there were some plays there. To, I thought Texas was about to lose the game. They let them. They were up 45-31, and then they were up. They were up 45-24 in the fourth. Yeah, and they let them right. They let them back and tied the game. But Texas pulled together a drive to hit the game-winning field goal. This kind of Kyler Murray. He was one of the people. He was one of the mm -hmm. Heisman watches. I think this kind of makes him fall up, fall back in the Heisman race a little bit. The, the way he performed because he had some tur he had a turnover, he had a fumble, he just had some crucial plays in there that kind of cost him the game. Yeah, these big. This is a typical Big Twelve game. Oh yeah, and they're always they're yeah, always yeah. fun to watch, especially yeah. if you like offense. They're always defense optional. Yeah, and it's optional. it's funny the. the we both said that we like Texas. They really only had one bad loss. I don't know if they're going to be playing for a playoff spot. Maybe. Number nine Who right knows? Now. Maybe. Who's not? Yeah, they went from number 19 to number 9. They jumped up 10 spots. Whereas I uh, have down Oklahoma now uh, fell to 11th. Yeah. So it's uh, – it's, if, it's if, they could, if, if they could win out, if they could win out, they have a chance. If they if they win out and they win their conference tournament, their conference game, championship game, I think they could. They might be, they might have a chance of being one of those top four teams because it's always better to be, to not be ranked in the top like top five or so mm -hmm. at the beginning of the season because any you lose a game early. Then you lose another game. Once you lose two games, then you're pretty much your season's pretty much done, unless you're Alabama. Right. But if you're ranked in the top four, top five early in the season, it's kind of a bad thing. Yeah. So those teams that are ranked outside the top ten, they they have a better shot if they go, if they play the role and you know win out the game. So Texas has a chance, yeah, especially it, this is an impressive win over Oklahoma. And for me, it just feels like college football is better when Texas has a good program. Yeah. Because you just think college football and you. You know, Texas is one of those teams, mm -hmm. along with um, Notre Dame, Alabama, Miami. Michigan, Miami, that, that just kind of has that feeling of those are the teams that uh, have great programs year after year. And yeah. Texas has struggled in the past few years, so it's good to yeah. see them coming around there were again. Two other upsets we'll qu quickly talk about. Number 22, Florida beat LSU. I don't really consider this an upset because no. the, their rivalry. Florida and LSU has this rivalry, and every time LSU goes in there, they lose. So I wasn't I wasn't too surprised by this. It was a tough loss for LSU, but they were they were in Florida, and this was a home game for Florida. They needed to win this game, so a big win for Florida. And Auburn, who was ranked number eight, lost to Mississippi State, who was unranked, and didn't have a division win at all, winning the SEC at all. So this. Not a good look for Auburn. Not yeah. a good look for Auburn. So we'll see. We'll see how they play us out because they still have Alabama to play at the end of the season. But yeah, right now they've they're one and two in the conference, and it's just not looking good for them right now. So, I mean, well, we got a pretty good L uh, SEC matchup coming in this week. Yep. And this is going to be Georgia's first real test against an LSU team who is, like you said, coming off of a loss. Yep. This who do you like game. in this game? This is in this is in Baton Rouge. Yes. And you know I have a cousin who goes to LSU, mm -hmm. so I have to be biased and I have to pick LSU to win this game. You know what? I'm gonna go with the underdog too. I'm gonna go with the underdog because of the kind of the almost uncertainty at the Georgia quarterback position right yeah. now, and. LSU, they haven't really been tested yet, Georgia. So an LSU will be hungry coming off a loss. I'm going to go with LSU. All right, we, we got about four minutes. The other big game, Wisconsin-Michigan. Uh, Michigan, of course. Michigan, all right. Washington-Oregon. Right. I'm going to go with Oregon. I'm going to go with Washington. All right, and now we got our NFL predictions. But before that, we got the video from last week's predictions. I, it's, it's somewhere in there, I hope. Let's do it. Hey, <laughs> Come on. Patriots. <laughs> Patriots. Titans, Bills. Oh, we're, uh, Titans. I have the Titans. 
Dolphins, Bengals. Bengals. Same. Bengals. Ravens, Browns. You know, I'm going to go for an upset and go with Cleveland Browns. Ravens. Packers, Lions. Uh, I'm going to go with another upset and say the Lions. Packers. Jaguars, Chiefs. Uh, this is going to be a tough one. I'm going to go with the Chiefs get their first loss of the season, Jaguars. I'm going Chiefs. It's in Arrowhead. Broncos, Jets. Broncos. Jets. Falcons, oh, God, Steelers. it's two times in a week. <laughs> Falcons, Steelers. Uh, Falcons. Steelers. Giants, Panthers. Panthers. Cam. Raiders, Chargers. Chargers. Raiders. Vikings, Eagles. Oh, interesting. Uh, Vikings bounce back. Eagles. Cardinals, Niners. This is probably the worst game of the week. Uh, I'm going to go with Josh Rosen and the Cardinals. Niners. Seahawks, Rams. Rams. Texans, Cowboys. Texans, two in a row. Texans. Skins, Saints. Uh, Saints for sure. I'm going with the Saints. Track. I, I kept track. So Brian got 11 correct and 5 incorrect. That's not bad. I got 9 correct and 7 incorrect. So Brian was the winner of last week's prediction. 11? That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Now let's, on to this week. Let's get it going. Okay, you read them up because I don't have them picked up on my screen yet. All right. Well, Thursday night, Philly versus, Philly versus New York. Philadelphia. Uh, Philly. Tampa at Atlanta. Atlanta. I'm going to go with Tampa. Ow. Pittsburgh at Cincy. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. I'm with you. I'm going with Cincinnati. All right. Los Angeles, Cleveland. Watch Los Angeles. Chargers. Uh, Chargers. Chargers. Seattle at Oakland. I'm going to say Oakland pulls off this win. Seattle. I'm taking Seattle. Chicago at Miami. Chicago. Miami. Arizona at Minnesota. Minnesota. Easy. Yeah, I'm going Minnesota. Colts, Jets. <sighs> this is a tough one. I hate picking the Jets, but I'm going to pick the Jets. Carolina versus Washington. Carolina. I, I got to go with Cam. I can't never bet against Wait, Cam. Wait, did you skip the Jets game? Who uh, did you pick? You didn't uh, say anything. I'm picking the Jets. Okay. That's three weeks in a row. Buffalo at Houston. Two terrible teams. I don't know who, sh who will show up. I'm going to say Buffalo. I'm going with the home team just because they're the home team. Rams, Broncos. Rams. Jaguars, Cowboys. It's at Jaguars. Texas Stadium. Jaguars. Doesn't matter where it's at. Jaguars. Jags. Baltimore at Tennessee. Who? This is a good game. I'm going to say Baltimore. Tennessee. Ooh. Kansas City at New England. Patriots, lock of the week. San Francisco at Green Bay. Hey, you Bay. didn't answer. Oh, Patriots, Pats, Pats. That's oh, what okay, good. Pats, All right. Pats, 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 Pats. Kansas City, I mean, San Francisco at Green Bay. Green Bay. Green Bay. Detroit, New Orleans. Mo that's, oh, those are the bye weeks. That's it. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it? That's all we got? All okay, right, good. That's all we got. What's this? All right, I want to hearts, per thoughts, and prayers go out to the people of a Haiti. They suffered another a big earthquake this past weekend, I believe. It was another devastating earthquake. For those people, they just can't catch a break. So my thoughts and prayers are with the people of Haiti. That's and nice. Hopefully they get through it. And, you know, we'll pray for them. They got through the last one. They'll get through it again. So, yeah. We're out of here. We're out of here. See you next week. It says it's weird because it has, like, hate.